First off, which two of these shapes are congruent to each other? Exactly, these two shapes are congruent. Next, take a look at this shape here. If we were to translate or move this shape without reflecting or rotating, is the translated shape congruent to the original? Don't worry, this is not a trick question. Exactly right. Translating something does not change its overall shape or size, so translation preserves congruence. Next, let's look at this shape. Now, if we were to rotate this shape, is it still congruent to the original shape? Excellent. Now, let's take this shape over here and we'll reflect or flip it. Is the reflected shape congruent to the original? Great. Next, let's take this triangle and stretch it out in the horizontal direction. So, is a stretched shape congruent to the original one? Right, so these two shapes are not congruent. Next, let's take this pentagon and dilate it so it has the same overall shape but a different size. For this specific dilation, the scale factor was 2. So all the lengths of this pentagon are twice the corresponding lengths of the original pentagon. So, is a dilated shape congruent to the original? Nicely done. A dilation will only preserve congruence if the scale factor is 1, meaning you're not actually changing the size of the shape. So while these two shapes are not congruent, there is a better word to describe how they're related. Do you remember what that word is? Precisely, dilated shapes are always similar to each other. And that means that while they have different sizes, other features of these shapes, like their corresponding angles, will be congruent. Okay, so to recap, which transformations always preserve a shape's congruence? Right, translation, rotation, and reflection are the transformations that always preserve congruence. Now suppose you have a shape, and you first translate it, and then you reflect it. The resulting shape will still be congruent to the original because translating it won't change the shape or size and neither will reflecting it. So next, take a careful look at these pairs of transformations down here. Which of these will also preserve the congruence of any shape? Nicely done. Let's take a quick look at these one at a time. Suppose we have a star. If we reflect it and then rotate it, the resulting shape is still congruent to the original. Great. Let's look at the second series of transformations. If we rotate our star, it's still congruent, but then if we dilate it with a scale factor of 3, it gets a lot bigger. And this larger star is definitely not congruent to the original. It's similar, but not congruent. Finally, let's look at this last series of transformations. If we dilate this shape by a factor of 2, it's no longer congruent to the original star. But if we apply a second dilation with scale factor 1 half, that precisely undoes the effects of the first dilation, and we're back with the original star. So while neither of these individual dilations preserves congruence, they do preserve congruence together. Pretty neat, right? Let's quickly define reflective symmetry. Consider this shape here. If we draw a line down the middle, you'll notice this is what's called an axis of symmetry. That means if you reflect or flip this shape over this axis, the shape is back to its original position. And that's what it means to say a shape has reflective symmetry. Next, take a look at these two shapes. For which one is this vertical line again an axis of symmetry? So which shape, after you reflect it across this axis, will be back in its original position? Nicely done. So if you reflect this shape, it stays in the exact same position. But this shape down here is not symmetric across this axis. If you reflect it, here's what you get. It's the same shape, but in a different position. However, this shape is still symmetric, but only across this horizontal axis. Symmetry shows up all the time in science and nature, and even in higher mathematics. Among the most beautiful examples are butterflies, 
and for this butterfly here, this is an axis of symmetry. So next, take a look at this square over here. Squares have more than one axis of symmetry. Here's one of the axes, and you can see this by reflecting the square across this axis. It's in the exact same position. And here's a line that is not an axis of symmetry. Reflecting the square across this axis, you change its position. So, how many different axes of symmetry does a square have? Nicely done. So a square has exactly four axes of symmetry. Here's one, here's a second, and a third, and a fourth. Reflect the square across any of these axes, and the square will be in the exact same position. Next, take a look at this regular pentagon. How many axes of symmetry does it have? Exactly. In general, a regular polygon with n sides always has exactly n axes of symmetry. Finally, try reflecting a circle. Here's one axis of symmetry, and here's another axis of symmetry. How many different axes of symmetry does a circle have? Excellent! Any line passing through the center of a circle is an axis of symmetry. So a circle has infinitely many axes. Circles are very symmetric. At this point, we'll move from reflectional symmetry to rotational symmetry. So here's a shape with rotational symmetry, meaning you can rotate the shape less than 360 degrees and it'll be back in its original position. Now here's a complete 360 degree rotation, and sure enough, we're back where we started. But let's take a closer look, and let's label the three ends of the shape with a blue dot at the top. If we rotate it a third of the way around, the shape is back in its original position, and we can rotate it a second time to get it back to its original position. To get the blue dot back on top, we need to rotate it a third time. So we say that this shape has three-fold symmetry, or that its order of rotational symmetry is three. When you rotate the shape a full 360 degrees, it will return to its original position three times. So next, here's a zoomed-in photo of a snowflake. Like many things in nature, the snowflake isn't perfectly symmetric, but what would you say is the order of rotational symmetry for this snowflake? Right, this snowflake has six-fold symmetry. Okay, now what about a square? Well, squares have four-fold symmetry. So then what's the smallest rotation that returns a square to its original position? Here's a 10-degree rotation, but that's not right. And here's a 45-degree rotation, but that's still not enough. What angle will get this square back to its original position? Precisely, you want to rotate the square so that this corner moves over here, and that's a 90-degree rotation. And if 90 degrees will get this square back to its original position, then so will rotations of 180 degrees and 270 degrees, which are multiples of 90 degrees. Next, try finding the smallest rotations that will return these shapes to their original positions. So you have a regular pentagon with five-fold symmetry. How much do you need to rotate it so that this vertex moves over to this vertex? And what's the smallest rotation for the letter N over here, which has two-fold symmetry? Excellent! So to get this vertex over here, you need to rotate this pentagon one-fifth of a complete rotation, or 72 degrees. And over here, you need to rotate the N 180 degrees to get it back to its original position. Do you notice a relationship between a shape's order of rotational symmetry and the smallest angle that returns it to its original position? Suppose you have a shape with 15-fold symmetry. What's the smallest rotation that will return it to its original position? Exactly! A complete rotation is 360 degrees, and if you divide this by 15, the order of rotational symmetry, this will give you the smallest angle, 24 degrees. This approach also works for these shapes. 360 divided by 5 equals 72, and 360 divided by 2 equals 180. Just to double check, here's a shape with 15-fold symmetry. It has 15 tiny peaks along its perimeter. 
The smallest rotation that would return it to its original position involves moving this point over here. And sure enough, that's 24 degrees. So nicely done.